Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk a little bit about my end of year checklist as a business owner of what do I go through with my own medical practice to make sure my employees are happy, I'm happy, and that financially we're on track to meet my goal. Even if you don't own a business or run a medical practice, it might be interesting for you to learn about what goes on behind the scenes at the end of the year to make sure everything's running smoothly. So here's my checklist. I would say the first step that I try to do is I try to take a step back and take a little bit of a break. Now you might wonder, why am I taking a break when there's a lot of work to get done? Personally, I do it because if I'm mentally exhausted, I know I'm not gonna do as good of a job. So I make sure that I go into the end of the year knowing that I'm at my peak in terms of focus, attention, and my goals going forward. Okay, so after you've taken a break, what are the high level things that you need to worry about? And I would say that is know your numbers. Have you ever watched Shark Tank where people go on there and pitch their business to hopefully get an investment from one of these celebrities? One of the quickest ways that these business owners get made fun of or thrown out of the room is they have no idea what their numbers are. The reason for that is it's the most important thing, arguably, when it comes to your business. Now you can get more into the details of it later down the road, which is beyond the scope of this video, but profit and loss is gonna be the first thing you look at. How much money did you take in and where did you spend that money? Then when you break that up, where did that spending go? Are you spending a lot more on training costs for hiring new employees and employee turnover? Maybe that's something to address. How much are you spending on advertising? How much is it for your customer acquisition cost or your patient acquisition cost? Another big thing that I try to look at is the 80-20 rule. 80% of your income is probably going to come from one source and then 20% is going to come from something totally different. With the 80-20 rule, I try to take a step back and say, how can I maximize the 80% or how can I minimize the 20% so that I'm focusing more on the high revenue things and not wasting my time and effort on things that are not bringing me a lot of income or fulfillment. I'm going to oversimplify your collections rate, but let's say, for example, you're billing out 200% Medicare, and let's say all of your contracts are a blended average of 100% Medicare across the board. All right, you build out $4 million to insurance, that's your inflated 200% price, which means if you collected 100% of the money, that you would have $2 million that you've collected at the end of that year. Now you go through your bank statements and you figure out that you've only collected 1.5 million for the entire year, which means your collection rate is 75%. If you have no idea what your collection rate is, you really need to spend some time figuring this out. Anything less than 90% means that you're leaving a lot of money on the table and then you need to dig into why. Is it that patients are not paying copays whenever they come into your office or is it that you're not collecting on the back end? You need to figure out why the money's not hitting your account. Next step, take inventory. Inventory. At the end of the year, you need to have assets on hand, and those are usually the consumables. For us, it's vaccines. For you, might be Botox, might be something else, might be all these uh, consumables if you're in a med spa that you may go through. Count up how many consumables you have, put a dollar amount to it, and send that off to your accountant when it comes time for taxes. If you have more than one location, and if you're using your own personal vehicle, you can easily write off the miles driven between those work sites. Two caveats to this, midway through the year, the cent amount that it changed per mile of reimbursement, that changed around July of 2022. It went from 58 and a half cents per mile to 62 and a half cents per mile. The other caveat to this is you cannot count the miles driven between your home and your primary office. Even though we usually tell employees that when they have a life-changing event, they need to notify us, at the very end of the year is usually when I like to send out a mass reminder to the employees to say, if you've had a life-changing event, whether you've moved, gotten married, divorced, whatever, make sure you let us know about it, especially if you're going to be filing your taxes in a different way or where do you want your W-2 to go. Our software automates that on January 31st, it automatically prints out everything for the W-2s, sends it right off to every single employee. In our system, if things are not updated on January 31st, it will go to whatever address is in the system or whatever it may be. So if they got divorced or if they're married now and they're going to file jointly and their deductions are different, that's all going to be messed up and we're going to have to go back, correct that, get a whole new W-2. It'll just delete delay everything for the employees and make our life a little bit more difficult. So I usually remind the employees to get this all correct. Performance reviews. A lot of people hate performance reviews because they feel like they're maybe being vilified for things that they're doing wrong. So this is when I usually use the time to give kudos to those that are doing really well. But I also try to take a high level and say, maybe who's not working as hard as someone else? Or if not, why? For example, now that we have a couple people working from home, I can see exactly how much time those people are logged into the medical record and how many phone calls they've made a day. And clearly when I went back through and started looking at the data is that one individual probably about three months ago really started trailing off in the number of hours that they were working in terms of phone calls per day and hours logged into the medical record. That needs to be addressed as to why are you not logging in? Why are you not answering as many phone calls? And if it's just because you're messing around, and you don't have a good answer for it, well, that's a problem. This is a time to go to those employees, give those that need 
improvement, time to improve, and a method to improve. I don't think that it's fair unless it's egregious to completely just fire them. And I think part of being a good boss is once a year sitting down and high level, getting a pulse on what are the employees like, how is the morale, and how can you improve those employees that are struggling. A similar thing that I do at the end of every year is to look back and figure out what can I automate in my practice. From 2021 to 2022, we automated a lot of things, ranging from the check-in forms, text messages, reminders, patient engagement, asking for reviews. At the end of 2021, we went in with about 100 five-star reviews. And at this point in time, we have about 300 or 400 five-star reviews. And it took us three years to get those 100 five-star reviews in the beginning. The end of year is a high level time to look back and say what can be automated what can we simplify if you have one employee that is calling every single person for a reminder that's ridiculous automate that the last thing kind of ties into the performance review is make sure you're giving a pretty good bonus at the end of the year we personally give one week of pay for those that have been here for six months or longer that's usually about what we end up giving we also make sure that we're now doing holiday parties we give gifts we pay for a lunch a lot of times your staff is taking the brunt of the phone calls the angry phone calls the disgruntled phone calls whatever it may be make sure you're treating them well. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I plan on being back to more regular postings once a week. See y'all next time.